European Wellness Academy presents a lecture about ASI, Active Specific Immunotherapy, as a complementary therapy for autoimmune diseases and cancer. When we speak about cancer and when we speak about the biological therapies for cancer, first of all, we have to understand that cancer is not a local disease. By uh, all means, cancer is not uh, pertain or contain in the tumor itself. Cancer is a systemic disorder. It's the disease of the entire whole system. And the tumor itself is just uh, one of the manifestations of the systemic disorder. The tumor represents the end process of either genetic mutation or immune disorders immune deficiency or loss of mitogenic control in the cells in a specific tissue. It can be associated with a non-oxidative metabolism or the Warburg effect that perhaps you all know about. Or there is an age-specific cancer therapy, uh, cancer theory. Uh, there's a different uh, theory, theories of carcinogenesis. Some of them even may involve uh, viral disease, and so on and so forth. So we have to understand that when we're dealing with cancer, we're dealing with systemic disorder. Hence, the approach has to be not only focusing on the local treatment, but also focus on the treatment of cancer as a systemic disease. And the main objectives of the biological therapies for cancer, they include the acute medical aspect, meaning to remove the tumor or reduce the tumor load without destroying or damaging the immune system and perhaps uh, with minimal or preferably without any anatomical or physiological damage to the system. And then uh, focus on the immunotherapy and one of the options that we are going to discuss today is the immunotherapy via the ASI, Active Specific Immunotherapy, which is meant to modulate the immune system to achieve an anti-tumor response with tumor-associated antigens as immunizing materials. And before we move on to that topic, let's just refresh a bit uh, memory what the immune system is. The immune system is meant to eliminate the foreign, undesirable, possibly damaging, harmful substances which enter our body, our system, and uh, uh, while eliminating those substances, there has to be minimal or no effect or damage to the nearby tissues and preferably there has to be no or very minimal damage to the equilibrium and the homeostasis. So uh, another uh, second uh, function of or objective of immune system is to combat and eradicate invading pathogens antigens and re-establish the homeostasis, the equilibrium of the entire physiology of the human organism. Autoimmune diseases and cancer are very much associated with dysregulation of the immune system in a very different, different ways. The aberrant activation of immune or inflammatory responses lead to a chronic disease and accumulation of the tissue damage. And it's very, very true when we talk about the mechanisms of aging or the, uh, the seven pillars of aging. One of them is uh, a chronic low-grade systemic inflammation, uh, that leads to development of the chronic age-related uh, age related uh, diseases, disorders, and uh, of course, immune system being one of the systems in the uh, human organism uh, is uh, also affected by this. 
process. Same goes to comparison. There are a lot of similarities between the cancer and autoimmune disorders. For instance, uh, in cancer, the tumor cells escape phases sustained by chronic tumor-promoting inflammation, which mainly involves immunosuppressive cells, while in autoimmune disease, an immune response against self or autologous antigens is developed. And then in cancer, there's a evasion of uh, evading immune destruction has recently been recognized as one of the hallmarks of cancer. You know, so it's a mismatch in the immune system while in autoimmune disease is caused by the breakdown of self-tolerance, which that uh, the adaptive immune system responds to self-antigens and mediates cell and tissue damage. And uh, there are definitely associations between the broad autoimmune diseases and cancer. Some of them can even trigger each other. Well, there are there's data that uh, cancers may trigger autoimmune conditions and as well as the autoimmunity may trigger uh, cancer as well. So for instance, patients with solid tumors or lymphoproliferative disorders may develop carcinomatous polyarthritis, which is a condition that is somewhat similar to the rheumatoid arthritis. Well, for instance, there's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients have increased frequency of autoimmune disorders, while the chronic inflammation is associated with increased risk of lymphoproliferative malignancies and other cancer types. For instance, rheumatoid arthritis can be associated with various types of cancer. We can actually elaborate this topic more and more and more and uh, bring uh, other examples uh, when uh, uh, long-term uh, chronic uh, inflammatory condition can trigger or promote or end up after many years, sometimes after several decades with uh, malignancy. For instance, uh, chronic pancreatitis increases up to 18-20-fold uh, chances of development of uh, uh, carcinoma of pancreas. And of course, uh, that comes with time, uh, say 20, 25 years. Uh, another example can be, uh, that can be given is a viral hepatitis. For instance, uh, hepatitis B uh, the virus of the hepatitis B is directly associated with development of the hepatocellular carcinoma. However, hepatitis C does not cause hepatocellular carcinoma per se, but after many decades of that uh, inflammatory and uh, uh, anatomical uh, morphogenic changes in the liver tissue, that can trigger development of the hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, uh, the biliary system also, the chronic long-standing inflammatory conditions of the biliary tree can promote and end up in the development of the malignancies like cholangiocarcinoma, for instance. Uh, another example is um, chronic bronchitis, you know, and the COPD, uh, which... Uh, after several decades also brings the increased risk and increased occurrence of lung cancer. So usually what is done in cases of cancer is conventional therapies and uh, uh, we all know about them. There are pros and cons of conventional therapies like in everything in medicine. Let's speak about the uh, weak points or the side, side effects or the minus points of the conventional therapies, well, of course, they can weaken immune system, they can damage immune system, they can reduce the activation and efficacy of innate and adaptive immunity that opens up a vulnerable uh, uh, places, vulnerable spots and opportunities for the opportunistic infections. 
The many examples can be given. For instance, the methotrexate, a uh, very widely used drug, may increase the risk of various infections, in particular opportunistic infections, have been more frequently reported in rheumatoid arthritis patients treated with methotrexate than in those receiving cyclosporine uh, as a theoprine um, uh, or uh, cyclophosphamide. If we compare the traditional cancer therapies, uh, for instance, uh, chemo, radio, or both used together, uh, with uh, immunotherapies that are developing rapidly in the past few years, we will see that the chances of developing systemic disorders or side effects in case of immunotherapies is significantly less lower compared to the chemo and radiotherapy, it's simply because chemo and radiotherapy is quite non-selective while affecting uh, and killing effectively cancerous cells, there is almost always concurrent damage to the healthy tissues, uh, the heart muscle is affected, the immune system is affected, the skin is affected, the liver toxicity, and so on and so forth. While in immunotherapies, uh, the, it is more targeted, it is more selective uh, against cancerous cells with much less damaging effect to the uh, healthy tissues and healthy organs. So what is immunotherapy? Uh, Immunotherapy is nothing else but the immunomodulation. It's the immunomodulation of the immune system that promote or inhibit specific immune response against some against various disorders. And immunotherapy is not only used in cancer treatment, it is also used in immunodeficiencies, either primary and secondary, in allergic disorders, as well as in autoimmune conditions. Immunotherapy has got uh, multiple types of it. We can classify it as an active and passive immunotherapy. The active immunotherapy is the activation of the immune system itself, while the passive immunotherapy is more effect on the tumor itself. So the examples of the active immunotherapy are vaccination. They will trigger the production of the uh, specific targeted uh, immune cells or use of the immunomodulators that will non-selectively increase the amount or activate immune cells, while the passive the examples of passive immunotherapy are such as the use of the antibodies or the use of the so-called adoptive immunotherapy. So let's talk about ASI. What is the active specific immunotherapy? The ASI is also known as the autologous active specific immunotherapy, is based on the Ideotypic network theory, which holds that an immune response leads to the production of two kinds of antibodies, namely antigen-specific antibodies or autoantibodies and anti-idiotypic antibodies, which interact with each other to regulate the humoral immune response. The role of the autologous active-specific immunotherapy as an autologous immunomodulating therapy is to induce the production of anti-ideotypic antibodies and modulate regulatory T cells, followed by neutralizing and inhibiting the secretion of autoantibodies and resulting in a balanced immune modulating network. Anti-idiotypic antibodies are widely used in autoimmune diseases, allergic diseases, and cancer treatment. ASI therapy 
is an autologous immunomodulating therapy which attempts to regulate the immune system by re-educating the host defense mechanisms and protecting the body. There are other common methods of active immunization as well. For instance, specific immunization with tumor-associated antigens, immunization by monoclonal antibodies, added from outside as ideotypes for generating anti-tumor antibodies. For instance, uh, of the tumor-associated antigen CA125. Immunization with extracts from tumor cells and surface antigen. Immunization by autologous or virus-modified tumor cell vaccines. Or immunization with inactivated extracts from the entire, the whole cell. A therapy with so-called autolytic cells, frankly speaking, has not turned out to be useful. Active immunotherapy has got a quite a long history, although its uh, wide clinical application it only has found recently within the past years, and even until now, it is still a constantly developing and improving methodology. But what we know is that from the almost the end of the 19th century, from 1893, when William Coley used live bacteria as immune stimulants to treat cancer. In a later part, in the 20th century, in 1949, Sir Mark Burnett published theory of acquired immunological tolerance, followed by in 1957, the discovery of tumor-specific antigen in mice, by George Klein, and then 1967, Burnett again, Sir Mac Burnett, proposed the theory of immunosurveillance, followed which in 1973, we know that dendritic cells were discovered by Ralph Steinman. And then the modern uh, history, uh, starting from the early 1990s, when 1991 was the discovery of molecular uh, defined tumor antigens recognized by human T cells. Then interleukin-2 was approved as anti-cancer therapy in 1992. 1997 was a hallmark year because it was a first approval of the monoclonal antibodies to be used in the uh, treatments of cancer. 1998 was the first report of a complete regression with uh, a regression of the cancer with uh, therapeutic cancer vaccines. And 2010 was first approval of therapeutic cancer vaccines. And now we know that almost daily, almost daily scientists are developing new immunological treatments for various specific forms of cancer. But we can say that one of the pioneers of immunotherapy and specifically of the active specific immunotherapy was Professor Rudolf Becker, who was the renowned Austrian cell therapist and uh, expert in uh, bioelectrotherapy. He has written many books, one of them titled Cancer, the Biological and Medical Tragedy, in which he was uh, describing sort of the, the basics, the foundation of the active specific immunotherapy.